Cool. Um, so I just before we start, I think there will be some parts of like package setup that we don't kind of get to, right? So the person next week might want to think about either digging deeper into some things because I'm going to try to get like a minimally viable set of functions that you need to get your package up and create a package and we'll do a demo. And there might be some arguments and whatnot that people want to look into <laughs> further. But then probably like package development. So I do touch on a few functions that you'll need and stuff, but then there's a whole list of those that, yeah, we definitely won't get onto. Right. Um, but cool, let me go ahead and share my screen. So like, just have to check you guys seeing like my, or well, this kind of Google doc. Yep. Cool. Um, so this little thing up here, options use this but i haven't actually checked that this works this is just in the package docs but this would be a way to set um like whenever you use the use this to create a package you could just set this and it would be the like destination duh. so it's going to be the place where your package is going to go to if you don't tell it to do otherwise um but let's say when you're creating um package you've got I think these main options and they kind of come together in here, like create package and create project. Um, they kind of do exactly what you'd expect. Um, I think by like a stronger premise, when you create package, if you don't have a project, then one will be created if I remember correctly. So when you are making a package, I think you you tend to just use create package um path kind of obviously is just oops is the location on your uh, file system that you'd like the package to be created in i think as like a good kind of practice you should always have something near your root directory that you can navigate to easily like something called uh, packages or git repos is what i use um and you'd feed that in and then you'd name the package um so I kind of gloss over fields here because <laughs> we'll just use the use description, um, which is like a different function in here, right? <laughs> um, and to be honest, I've built now quite a few packages and I've contributed to a bunch of packages and I've never really fiddled <laughs> with fields. I feel like it's more, more damage than you need, um, at least when getting started. And that might be something for next week. Maybe someone wants to take that and go, Okay, fields is actually really important. So you should do <laughs> this and that. Um, all these kind of things, you know, it's just checking, okay, are you using our studio? It's kind of obvious. Check name. Now it's kind of maybe important. Um Cran has its own set of valid names. I think you can't have underscores. Um, and it can only be like one word and stuff, right? You can have capitals, can't start with a number. I made a package a minute ago with an underscore, forgetting that this wouldn't work just while I was testing it out. And you can turn this on and off. So say if you did, like me, make a repo with an invalid name, like package docs un underscore dummy, you could still create an R project and package if you put uh, check name equals true. Um, but these are quite... These are quite simple. Oh, that's another point. I haven't done the create tidy things. I feel like, John, you mentioned in the last meeting that they're a bit stricter and they're maybe we should deal with them all in one, like use tidy eval and all those kind of things, right? Um, well, it's I'm more like, that like it, it sets some things, it it, uh, it assumes like it's, it's written purely for people who work for our studio and are developing tidyverse packages. Like it sets up things that specifically are like email addresses at our studio and things like that. Um, I really think like I want to PR a version of that that is in between that where you can set some parameters because it sets up all the stuff that like, you know, it, it basically it calls all the functions that you're about to walk through how to call. Mm -hmm. Like it does all the steps. Um, but it does some, a few extra things that are annoying so that, you know, you only want if you're like Hadley. Um, mm -hmm. And so it'd be nice to back it off just a little bit so that you could use it uh, more regularly. 
Yeah, nice. So I, I'll be honest, I'm kind of completely ignorant of that. So I, I won't um I won't add anything to that because I'll just end up saying something stupid. Um but after after packages and projects, there's create from GitHub. Um so yeah, it's kind of obvious, right? Instead of um putting a path where you want it, you put the repo spec, which you're gonna say if you open this. You can just grab this string. And if you're in our studio, oops, you would be able to go and place that in repo spec. And then Desta, right, is path from the create package or create project. It's like the destination directory. It's where do you want this package to be? You could set a fork. Um, I kind of don't necessarily know why you would do this. Um, like instantly to set a fork, I guess. I don't know. Any ideas, John, why you would want to set a fork straight away? Oops, sorry. It's um, usually you would say true or false. Um, and it's if you're creating uh, creating from GitHub, like if I'm creating something from R4DS, I either could create it or I can either just um, pull it, you know, fetch it or I could fork it and then fetch it because I have write access on r for ds And sometimes it's nice to actually be working off in your own fork, even if you have write access. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why. So um, if you don't set it, you know, if it's an NA, it just kind of figures out, oh, if you have write access, then I don't have to fork. If you don't have write access, then I do have to fork. Um, mm -hmm. And mo almost all the time, that's just leave it at that and it'll make something that works. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll try this now when we get to like running through a demo so provided we i definitely want to save the time because i think it'll only take 10 minutes or so to whiz through um so essentially it just saves you a step um and stops you maybe doing something stupid at some point hopefully which is kind of always a good thing when you're doing this kind of thing um so use the description so i guess it may be a good idea actually to stop and get a count or an audit of how familiar people in here are actually with like the package setup like do people use our oxygen already do people use dev tools do they know what description is namespace like int slash docs man and all this stuff um is there anyone who when they look at this kind of thing that it's all just gibberish i feel like that's a bad question because nobody will actually say that that's true um it's not what, total gibberish but i'm not comfortable with it either i've seen it but i don't okay. have it internalized so i'd be happy to have a more detailed walkthrough if you want to yeah well we're gonna um we're gonna use all of these functions at the end right um but say uh the description the description is really important um at least for me or has been most important like to be honest i've never really cared about this stuff like, i just edit that later on and put like the name <laughs> a new contributor comes on from the repos I'm working on. I'd either say to them, just add yourself or like I'll add you. And you can do that easily enough in R, or you can do that through like the like editing the web page. If I mean there's not necessarily that much reason to use this, I find. Um, but what description does do is um lets people know what like what, uh, which packages your package depends on and which you suggest should be installed. Uh, and that can be like quite important, obviously, because if you don't put packages in the um, description, then people will install it. And then if they haven't got those packages, then they'll get an error that says, oh, this package, blah, blah, blah. Or like you don't have this package installed or you don't have authorization. And if you've done, if you've used description correctly, um, and you've used the next functions like I think I've maybe got them in here or maybe not um but let's say like is it I have to remind myself you use package or is it nice that's the way yeah so you'd add whenever you say it you like use per at you do use this use package per and then it will wrap it all up into this the description for you um 
and we'll double check that because I actually haven't done that for a little while. Um, that's that's what the description um, does for you. It takes care of a few of those things. Um, there's also like a namespace. So you want to use our oxygen equals true. Like there's just no, I, I'd never see a reason not to. Maybe, maybe if you were making like multilingual packages or something, you might not want our oxygen to do so much stuff that I feel like even then you just use it because it's great. And that when you like export your functions, it adds them to the name. Oh, if you build your function correctly and you insert the Roxygen skeleton and you've used use namespace, then it just exports your, the functions for you so that someone else, when they come to use your function, will A, they'll be able to use it, but also it would be in here. Like all of these functions have been added to use this as namespace. At some just, to, just to back up a tiny bit, uh, Roxygen or our oxygen is a package that for like documenting packages for anyone who hasn't used it. Um, and so, yeah, that's the, I always like, I don't know. I'm sure there are people who have their, who have good reasons not to use Roxygen, but use Roxygen. Like it just makes your life easier. Mm -hmm. And the stuff like there's the Roxygen eyes and it's uh, what clean equals true. Like that's just so helpful when you're like you're in the early stages of a package and especially if it's a data package it's not like software engineering you might not know what you're going to put you got a rough idea what you're going to put in this package but you're going to change names you're going to change different parameters arguments and things and you'll save them you'll commit them into github and stuff um and unless you're running the checks religiously which you should be like you'll forget <laughs> things it won't tell you you can still push it to github whereas our oxygenize or proxygenize will just remove all those like things that you'll just forget or I always kind of forget. <laughs> can we hmm? sorry, can you stay on that namespace? Um yeah, uh, yeah. I actually don't have this internalized in my brain at all. So what exact I mean, what exactly is a namespace? So there are you could have private functions that are not exported. Is that the point or yeah, like you could have um, a bunch of internal functions, um, or, like or deprecated functions. Um, you could have so normally you'd hide them with a dot, like um, put like dot within something, blah blah blah, and that would be like a hidden file in the same way that um, yeah, in a terminal there will be dot files and they're hidden. Um, okay. When you export them, that function it will just it will add it and it will make it publicly available. Um, and I get this, like, it seems quite kind of abstract, right? Like, if this is the first time you're coming across it, you won't certainly have it internalized. But when we, at the end, do a demo of making the package, I'll try to hopefully go like, okay, look, this is what the use description just did. And we'll look at what's just appeared. And then, like, this is what use namespace just did. And when we make this function, Roxygen kind of does this for us. So why this seems like it, it's putting a lot of work on you have to explicitly export them and you say that's the preferred way of doing that? No, so like um, you, Rox, Roxygen will have when you when you're developing a, developing a package, right? You'll you'll load the packages. Not I'd say Dev Tools kind of just does everything. Um, I think when you load Dev Tools, you get use this and a bunch of others. Um, I explicitly load Roxygen. I might not need to. <laughs> but once you allowed Roxygen to start working, whenever you build a function and you insert the Roxygen skeleton, one of the things that will have is like a, it's like a parameter kind of, it's mm -hmm. like a, yeah, like it has a hashtag and then an apostrophe, and mm -hmm. then it will say export at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that will just do it for you then. So that when you save that function and you document using DevTools, then it adds stuff not just to like Roxon's namespace, but it gives you the man folder or the man file, which is for like the documentation and for stuff on websites or uh, the various reference and article places. And it just means you don't have to go and say like, you just have to make that function, right? And insert the skeleton. You don't have to make that function, add all the things that you might need, like params, export examples and stuff, and then go to the namespace and add it in. Roxygen knows that this stuff should all be in the namespace because it comes under an export tag. And again, I think 
when we build the toy package at the end, we'll get maybe a much clearer like mental model or image of what Roxygen does and why we should use it. Okay. I, yeah, I'd appreciate because this to me, this doesn't, if it's true, it exports nothing. If it's false, it exports all functions. Like this doesn't make sense to me. So I'm looking forward to the example. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, I would, like I said, I'd never, I've never played around with Roxygen equals false. So as John hints at, there I, might be people that would say, like, oh, you should use that for blah, blah, blah. I've never had a problem with it. Um, and I, yeah. Yeah, I've never, I mean, I've never called this function directly. Um, oh, and there's a thing in the chat from Arthur. Random unimportant question following on Jack's comment. Could Roxygen be used to document functions from other languages? Huh. Not by, def like, I don't think so because it, oh, oh, you, sorry. Not so uh, other human languages, other natural languages, not programming languages. Uh, could you create like a man page for, um, uh, for like, a, I don't know, like a Python function or something Okay, else? you do me. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. You could create an R package man page for it. Like you can create a man page for anything really. Um, but I don't know that that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, there, there are other functions, right? Like here, like um, use RCPP and use C and stuff like this. And I haven't actually gone into them today because I feel like they're mm, not- right. um, They're another level. Yeah, they're not necessary for like the minimal, minimally viable package that I kind of want to build today. Um, but that would be next week. That's something to look into. Like, how does Roxin like deal with um, multilingual or multimodal mo multimodal packages? Um, yeah, it'd be it'd be good to know that because there, especially with the way things are going, there might be reasons you know to have Python mm -hmm. stuff in our packages, and um, although maybe you just use reticulate. I, We've done quite a lot of stuff with hugging face R with that, but it it often you don't actually you don't need to add anything special in terms of R package building. You let it, like reticulate deal with the dependencies, and you there there are different things that are helpful, but they're probably a little bit beyond the scope of like the first time building a package. Um, so let's because I think we don't have two. Uh, We've got time, but I want to, especially given, I think it's Rebecca, right, who said about description namespace. I definitely want to get to building out a package in our studio um, so that we can see it all in action. But use use Magritte's pipe, so use underscore pipe. I like this, and I've added it into all our packages at work and my own things, because before what you used to do in like every single function, basically, you used to have an at import from Magritte and then the pipe in the symbols and stuff and you just don't need to do that you just call use pipe call it once and then anywhere in your package um people people can use the pipe um i think provided that they have magritte installed but then it's going to add magritte to like the request to the description right and say you have to install that to do this i think this one is clearly going to somewhat probably decline in terms of how necessary it is because you check the recent tidyverse docs like for i think it was per and for deep flyer they're moving to the base pipe um which probably means a lot of people are going to start moving to the base pipe and the magrit pipe's probably going to be you know not deprecated because they're I'm, I'm imagining most people know but there are different things about the magrit pipe that are useful that aren't as easy with the base pipe but over time Packages are going to be built with the base pipe, so this will become less necessary. But it's a good thing to call. Call it once, and it's there. Um, use build ignore. So the dot r build ignore file. It's a funny file. Um, basically, what this says is like if you put stuff in here, when you start building your package, and when you run checks, and when you run different things, they'll just get ignored. Um, there's lots of reasons like you'd want to do that. You might have um, files that wouldn't pass a test, or you might have your own kind of idiosyncratic like file system that you like to have in your packages. Um, 
but essentially just use the build up, use, use this function. And then a couple of things will go in there. Like docs will go in there. I'm pretty, if I remember correctly. And it, like it says, it will be a regular expression. So it will have like starts with something and then it's docs and then it ends with, so it will only get rid of those folders. And yeah, it's a good folder to have, especially when you're developing fast in a package and you don't want to run tests, for example, every build. Um, you can just pop them in there for a while and then bring them back out. Use test that. So if you're not familiar with tests and test-driven development, um, something I feel like everyone should try to become familiar with <laughs> um, because it makes your life just so much easier if you've written the tests. A, before you even write the function, you write a test that fails and you make that test pass when you write the function. And then every time you add a new feature, you build a new test and you check. But what this does is you use test that, you call it once and then in here. So eventually you'd have, we're going to have some folders and there will just be a test folder and one we would call test that. And then if we see like down here, there's use test. Uh, so that actually follows from use R. And every time like you make a function, you call use R and then the name of the function. Um, so you'd add in here like uh, my underscore multiplication or something in a string. And that will make the R script where that function will be saved. And then you do the same thing with use test. So use underscore test and then my underscore multiplication. And they really just are lifesavers. Um, I don't know if you've got anything to add, John. I know you're quite a fan of tests. Uh, not really, just, yep. <laughs> uh, and like use this makes it really easy to be good about it. Um, and uh, being good about it, uh, like it's the, the main thing is it protects future you that when you change something in the future, you just run your tests and make sure they still pass and you don't have something that you don't know when it broke and you don't know why it broke and you don't even know that it broke. Um, and so tests are good. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, I think ambitiously, we'll try to build a test for a function today as well because we we will call use test and uh, use test that. And then we'll have a quick look um, at what tests are, where they sit in your package. Um, and certainly you can't teach like how to um, like how to do test driven development is a scope for, I don't know, a week, a part of a course that teach you how to program a week might be spent. <laughs> and then the rest of your career will be spent on getting better at making tests, making sure you've got good coverage and lots of different things. Um, but it's definitely something when you build your packages that you just want to get in the habit of. Um, so kind of okay, glossed over this as well. So you use package down. Uh, now package down is God, like hard to say what's your favorite package in R, but this is like up there for me because <laughs> I don't, I didn't know any front end development languages like HTML, CSS when I started R. So the or YAML or like um, what's it called? Like YAML. Um, I just didn't know any of that stuff. Um, so that there is something that lets you just use R, but get your stuff to become a website. And you can see like, this is all done with package down, like package down's own documentation is, it's like built with package down, right? And you get, so let me just move my zoom thing. You get nice things like setup articles, reference and stuff. And we will look at those, um, let me get this back because they have different functions like you build the reference and the articles. Um, but yeah, you you run use package down when you're in our studio. If I remember correctly, you only call it once. Um, and then you do things later on with package down um, that we will talk about. But these guys use vignette and use article. They're very similar in the same way that use test and use R are very similar. Um, we call, we call it like in our studio in the console and when in the name you should as it will say here you can follow the good naming like linux conventions right like either snake or snake case but with apostrophe i think that's like 
that Apple case? I can't remember. That's like, I can't even remember the different cases. But yeah, and this will be uh, what it actually uh, looks like. Kebab case. Kebab case. <laughs> yep, because it's like a shish kebab. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. It's like the skewer. Yeah, nice. Yep. Um, so you you so your file system's nice. I mean, I personally always just oh. use snake case, but you can yeah. name it like this, and then this is what it will actually look like in your package um in the website here. So they've got you see, it's all like this. It's like it looks nice, it looks like English properly. Um, uh, Arthur Arthur has a question um back on use bold ignore. Um, asking if anyone's used it uh, because Gollum um, and other things from ThinkR have like a dev folder that's helpful, but they run afoul of dev tools checks. Um, I think you do, you I, do exclude folders. Um, yeah, that, the, that's primary. I could have sworn that they automatically put their dev folder into build ignore, but you could do that for sure. Yeah. But I think the the, I mean, you can, you can make it ignore a dot r script or a dot rmd right but right. primarily most of what it does at the beginning i'm pretty sure is stuff like docs which is a whole folder and yeah. that that's recursive in that everything within docs is hidden so if docs has a hundred files inside its one folder then when you build it does like whatever is building or compiling the package will not look in that folder um but you can you can put doc slash and then a regex like anything with an extension. So you could use like the star dot RMD, right? And it will, okay, it won't, it will, it will look at everything else except the RMD files. Like you can do anything you can kind of do with regex and the various operators you can make like ignore. So that's files and also folders. Um, yeah. Thanks so then. No worries. I'm just going to remind. Yeah. Okay. So you see, like in here, so of the vignettes and the article, there's a different thing, which is like dot git ignore, which that's what do you not want to put on GitHub? I think, right? It's just like yeah. when you send, when you push your package and when you um, upload it to GitHub, anything in git ignore won't, won't go in there. So I'm pretty sure you can just put your passwords and stuff and it's compliant, right? It's like, doesn't go anywhere um and yeah like it says you just use vignette and the same the same thing for use article now i put them down here but i feel like they should actually just go with these with vignette and article but when you start because we've already done use package down we can now start to take care of some of the things that package down does for you but there's a function in package down it's build reference section um and oh sorry build reference index and i think you pretty much just like don't worry about any of this um at least for now i think because you call this and then that gives you like a, a dot yaml folder um or like underscore package down dot yaml and then you can go inside you can use some YAML like reference colon, and then you can set up the order and it's like it's contents or title and you can put them into sections. Like they have, okay, build here, right? This is one section of the YAML and it has all of their um, different build functions. And if you click on them, you'll just get the docs. Um, yeah, and you control that inside your yaml folder and then you'd have a different section and it will be called deployment and that has all your deployment functions um and that's super helpful because otherwise if you don't know yaml you don't you're not a front-end dev it's like you wouldn't know to do any of this stuff i never i never knew to do any of this stuff and i remember i first started picking up someone else's package and I got to the end of like developing the functions and stuff. And then my boss was just like, well, where's all the like articles and the reference stuff? And I just had no idea because I, I just started developing. Whereas <laughs> these functions, they take care of that for you. Sorry, um, where, where do you specify groupings? You do that inside the YAML. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll take Is a look. Is it not also in the like Roxygen tag up top for a function or something that you can specify them or 
Uh, you might be able to. I don't know that you can because you okay. get like you get you write the description first, so you have like a tag headline, and the next line will be under description, and you write some stuff that you want people to know, and then it's like the parameters, so each parameter, and then it's just like usage, um, examples, export, and any other keywords you add. You might be able to help with our oxygen but i don't know that our oxygen or oxygen really cares too much about your website right it's all about your package being built and then you have package down which takes care of your website and all those kind of things um let's say if we if we go back here so these ones these two are quite important potentially and i'm going to be honest i always forget which one's the good one which one's the bad one but one of them doesn't automatically update if you use that. And I think it's the underscore MD. So when, if you use, like use underscore readme MD, I think it will say something here. So yeah, the difference is the readme RMD is making a version that you can put R code into, and then you render that so that it'll display properly on GitHub. It makes the MD version. Um, and, uh, Rebecca has a question in the chat about why wouldn't you want vignettes to be tracked? It's the, the built vignette that isn't tracked. Um, and the idea is that you don't want to be, um, sending the rendered version, uh, up to GitHub because it doesn't like, you don't need the rendered version to install the package. It, it renders when the package installs and you don't want it to get out of date with what the package actually does. Um, and so that's why they don't uh, do that. Yeah, I'd also sometimes, I've, and I've done this one, maybe I shouldn't, I'd also just add vignettes all the time to the build ignore for a while because I know that I've broken stuff and I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want it to check the vignette yet because I haven't even got to the vignette to change it. And I don't want the check to take a long time. I imagine there's stuff inside check where you could just put like vignettes equals true or something, like false or something. Right. But I've put vignettes deliberately to be ignored when I know that they're going to be broken and I want them to be broken and <laughs> I'm going to fix them later, but I don't want to have to get told every time I do something that oh, you broke this vignette and your check breaks and it doesn't get to the other stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think John's answer is much clearer on why <laughs> that exact tracking thing is in place. Um, okay, so we're getting on the time. I think we still got a bit of time. I would like to definitely show what the readme does like on a package. Um, so we will have a look at that. This build readme was an interesting thing and I'd forgotten about this. And I remember way back when I got caught out with this. Um, but I think it was, wasn't it? If you, yeah, if it just, it makes sure readme.md gets updated when you've made changes to readme.rmd, which I think weirdly isn't always the case. I remember I ran into this before where I thought it was going to change and it didn't. Um, you can just use this function to make sure that happens, uh, which is nice. Licenses, um, yeah, I mean, personally, I want everything to be everything I make be, to be completely open source. And I kind of push for this at work as well. So we use like an MIT or an Apache license and that just adds it formally to the package and says like, you can use this for whatever use you want or don't want. I haven't actually looked into them too much. Cause like I said, I think for like a minimally viable um, package, like you don't really need to worry about this. What might be interesting is this, they say use proprietary license. Um, I don't know anything about that because I don't work in an environment that we would want to have like proprietary things. We kind of committed to open source. Mm -hmm. We all benefit from the open source community. So we're quite happy to like make sure the stuff that we build goes back. Um, let's say use logo. Uh, it's like here. This is their logo, right? I'd guess. And they'll have that stored in one of their one of their files i think it does actually say where it gets this from or it puts it in man for you 
Yeah, so it will store it in man, but you'll probably have like docs or images, um, as say in here, it'd be something like docs or images. And you'd link that when you use the logo, you'd link to that file that's in here. And then it will add it to the man so that it can go online and be shared with everyone. Um, this function is really cool. Use latest dependencies. So um, when you're when you're like building your package and you make the description as as like a default, when you add say per to your description through um, like our oxygen and dev tools or whichever one it is that keeps updating them, it will just say the package name. It won't necessarily have a version. Um, and that can be bad because say, if you want a specific version to be installed, you need to state that specific version. But normally if you're just adding a package, say, I don't know, today I'm adding a package, it's best to just choose the latest version. So if you just call this function, it will add the latest version in your description. And then that will mean you don't have to go through your installed packages and session info and find the latest version or do any of that. It will just do it for you. And I guess overwrite, um, I'd kind of, unless you know you need an old version of a package, I'd opt for changing this from false to true normally just so that anyone who does install it is going to be working with the latest things, latest packages. So unless you know that you need an older, more like specific version, I think you'd probably normally set this to true. And I hope that's not bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't break something for someone. Um, okay, so going to gloss over use GitHub Actions, um, build reference index and articles you've done. Build site. So once you have done the reference index and the articles and you have like executed use package down, you can build the site using this function. And okay, so yeah, you should. I think even if you use package down to do in its site, the first time you ever do it, um so the first time you build your website or you want to see what your package's website will look like, you run in it underscore site. And then every time after that, say you go into your package, you make some changes to some functions, change some documentation, whatever you do, you'll save it, then you'll document it. And then uh, you should build the site again. And what that will do on Git, say, or like in our studio, if I had this as a Git repo, which I don't yet, um, it would add a bunch of things like to the man files and it would change them for you. And then you just commit those normally under like build site. And then it will show you a preview of if you go ahead with all these changes and you push them, this is what your site will look like. And you can go in and check, right? Like did your vignettes break? Because if you broke them, you might find some errors and stuff like this in here. And um, but that's a really cool function build site because you don't necessarily need to worry about uh, these other ones, build article, build tutorials and stuff. Because if I remember rightly, build site will just, it will rebuild all of them for you. If you wanted it to be faster, say it was quite a big site, you could just build home and you could just build reference and just check and it will load for you in a browser. It will load the reference section and you can just see like, okay, did the changes I'm, made or made uh, break anything if they didn't call now i'll build the site and i'll check the whole site and it'll be nice and fast don't have to let everything everything load and then this was yeah this is something we were talking about very briefly in the previous meeting right john um use package down github pages and use github pages so i'm going to go to use github pages first um because yeah, if you see here, it says publish from the root directory of a GH pages branch. Um, and I remember I'd forgotten that you needed this branch to build the site properly. And I it wouldn't build the site for a while. Um, I, but So I, I'm, I'm curious to see if this updates soon because GitHub has launched a new way to build GitHub pages like new actions 
that they publish. Um, these ones that that are used by use this are third party actions. Um, and I'm curious to see if they update it because I, I just recently updated all of the book club sites to use the new better or not better, but um, officially supported uh, GitHub pages thing. So yeah, it, it makes this branch or you need this branch for this, but you don't anymore if you do the GitHub pages or the whatever, the official GitHub pages publishing. Um, and so I'm hoping they update. I mean, you know, it'll still work for old things, but that's been the thing is something will change somewhere and it, the book stopped building. And um, by having an officially supported thing, you don't have to worry about that as much. Yeah, I, I think this thing kind of sucked, if I'm honest, like needing this branch yeah. and yeah. wasn't that intuitive. It wasn't obvious. It's not, maybe I just missed it from various times I've gone over documentation and stuff, but it took me a couple of hours to figure out why my changes when I build the site and everything were working perfectly, but they weren't converting to the, like the actual packages website. So not converting to the GitHub pages. But I think you mentioned last time, John, that this um, doing it this way, using use underscore GitHub packages, or use what's it called? Use package down GitHub pages will take care of all that stuff for you. So yeah, I, it just have does all the steps. There. Yeah. Do you want to give like maybe a bit more of an explanation of what this one kind of does? So I've had like a whole bunch of different packages that I had never learned package down. I was like, Oh, I don't, you know, I don't have time to actually sit down and learn it. And if you just call that function, it does everything. And you have a package down site. Like there's no, there is no step two. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, I mean, I guess push is the step two, but it does all the thing. It sets up the actions. It creates the branch. Um, it does everything like you know you can customize more to make the package down site um better but it it works right away and it just uh it was really nice to to learn that it's like oh okay just just do it stop stop uh thinking about doing it and do it yeah look looking at it here right it, so it says this one does some stuff like mm -hmm. it's nice stuff but then this one here first calls that for you then it does this then it does this and then you get all this so yeah i can definitely see that if you weren't and even if you are familiar with package down it seems to me like going forward you yeah. probably just want to use this one um yeah let's see right so let's um there might be a couple of times here where i forget a step um <laughs> But why don't we see if we can build a package? So first function I think we want to get up is this one. I'm just going to get my GitHub. Does anyone have any um, questions about those things so far? Um, or that anything they want to like go back and double click on or anything like that while I get this? Okay, do I need to check? Okay, so let's say uh, this was, how did I get rid of it? Okay, so this is our thing. So I would, myself, I would actually do this. I would go to the Git repos and then Git clone this. But I wanna see how, so I use like, when I'm working on packages, I have this little code snippet and it doesn't actually save much time, but I quite like it. Um, but let's say create from GitHub and then repo spec this and then say that Does that do what? Yeah, that's <laughs> quite cool. So by magic, it's going it's opening up another R studio. I'm just going to check if that is. Oops. Okay. So this package docs are, yeah, okay. So we've actually got our folder and it's opened everything here. So 
this is now a package that's so in git repos package docs are so now we should use create package i think oh wait Let's see path equals can i just use dot do you think or <laughs> hmm. Seems like maybe not a good idea. So, say if we want to create a package, I just use path equals. It's called package dot path. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say do that. <laughs> I open up another one. So that's maybe not the right way to do it. Um, but when this when this opens now we've got some folders right actually so we've got some things we can look at like description we've got build ignore you see it's got uh these things and uh, git ignore will have something and the description and the namespace now kind of roxygen is kind enough to say like do not edit by hand um because you don't need to um and if you do you can start getting into some some trouble but we've also got an R folder. And if we call, well, actually, let me just do it sequentially. So use description. Well, we've already got a description, use namespace. We've already got a namespace. So let's go use pipe. I'm going to load this. So now should add, yeah, see in our. Like I didn't have to do anything except call use pipe. And now when I look in the description, well, I've got Magrita. Um, and we can start looking in the, the GUI of Git, uh, our changes say in the description, well, it's, it's added Magrita here. We'd probably, I guess, like run this quickly so that we commit everything and sorry i've got the zoom thing so you just initial commit similar i haven't actually set up the remote or have i Let's see <laughs> okay we have but we are on main so you probably wouldn't do this you don't want to switch branch but for now we'll just do that we'll push uh those things will be gone and then whenever we make a change to the package it will automatically update um we don't need to call this i guess because we've already got a build ignore um let's call use tester because we're going to see a new um tests test that um so it's given us a nice nice new folder where all our tests could go we're going to make a pack a function so let's make a test called my function and then in here, let's say function fails. So we should say expect, I think it's expect error. Um, so like it's this. Oh, yeah. If we save this right for now and just document, then we. I just not run this. So we document the changes. Um, and you see it's added. Oh, when we document the first time, right, we get the pipe. Um, and when we make a new function, so we're going to call it my function, we'll get a dot r, and this should be like my function is function, and it takes x as an input, and then just put stop error um so before when i ran this test it shouldn't have worked so you get some things we clear this yeah so my function did actually pass now because i expected it to raise an error um and it does actually raise an error. So if I'm following test-driven development, now I'll say, well, what do I want my function to do? Um, I want it to do something else. So uh, function returns a list or something, put it like this, and then 
uh, we'll expect true and then just last. We, we do some other things, we build some tests out and then this one should actually start failing and then I can delete that test. I can start with this test. I can keep on building and building and building. Um, but let's say in here, at the moment, this function isn't being exported, um, doesn't have any of the nice stuff. Whereas you make sure, let's say, okay, let, let's say you're not in a function body. If you try to insert the Roxygen skeleton, yeah, I didn't actually want it to do that. I wanted it to fail. Uh, yeah, so you get this. It's like, I'm unable to insert the skeleton. It's because you're not currently inside an R function definition. Step inside the R function definition, insert the Roxygen skeleton, and here you put your title and my, um, I don't know, do what my function does. And then <laughs> this will be the title. And then in here would be your description. It's like this function should be used sparingly. I don't know. Um, and it's put the parameter X. And now you should say like uh, stuff about X. So like uh, this, um, I don't know, a vector of integers. Like, I really don't know, um, but we want it to uh, return a list. We want it to export. And then in examples, we'd put like my function and we'd call it with say, uh, list of one, two, three. And if we actually had some logic in here, it would, it would actually do stuff, right? Like this example, when I save and then document, that's it's been added to the RD. So if I go into the man, um, this would actually have some stuff. And this will, if we use package down, and then we build the site. I don't know if this will work. Um, but it will try to build it. And then, yeah, okay. So we've got this. And now on my website, if I eventually build it, we've got the title of my function the description um, usage is just all of the arguments with the function and then, okay, your arguments. So now if you're editing this function um, and this is maybe a great thing about Roxygen, let's say this expects Y and you put document and you run check, then it's gonna say like, uh, there are some arguments or similar in your my function that are not in usage and yeah, that are not documented. So now you'd want to code, insert the rocks in skeleton again, and then get a vector or just another vector of integers. And then when you do this and you document, we'll take care of that error and we move on to the next one. Um, while that loads, let me just check if there's anything. Oh, uh, use vignette. Use oh yeah. Let's do use readme before we finish there. Use readme rmd. Okay. So now we've got our use our rmd, and this is where we should put like installation instructions or um, I know this is a development version so you use github um install or like and then you put in a code chunk like dev tools install from what's it called is it not from github install github no from yeah yeah install github and then you put the repo um let's say it's going to be compass here slash package dot r save that document and then not find package root that. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's do this again real quick and see what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it actually does that for you. And that's what's this? So it does that for you, which is nice, right? Um, yeah, I don't know why I keep getting this dictionary pop up, but it's starting to it's starting to annoy me. Um, so okay, you do this document, 
And then I'll be honest, I don't know if this is going to work in the way it should because I feel like we haven't got the readme MD. So yeah, we don't have the readme MD, so it's not doing what it should do right now. So I think that means we would use the readme MD. And then we do, oops, we don't want to change any of that. Save that and then we build, read me, and then let's just build. I um, don't see it. Cool. I thought that was a home as well. But when we do this, hopefully, we actually now have a read me. Um, yeah, like we've got this read me, right? Um, and I guess that's like with, with six o'clock. And those are maybe, maybe the beginning of how you build a package and how you get these things all kind of working with one another. Yeah, is there anything? Oh, sorry, there might be a question. Ah, okay, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, well, I guess I, I think that's me. Um, <laughs> Does anyone have right. any bits? One one question. I, I think this is something I've I've always wanted to do, but never bothered to look into how to do. Is it can one store kind of description fields and load them for every package you make? Like, let's say you're the author yes. of your own packages. Okay, thanks. Is is, uh, is that a matter of having a local file, or are you? There's a how do you um, store those? Use this has. Uh, uh, Profile settings. So if you go into, and I can't remember where the, these are documented, um, but uh, I have something like this. Let's see. Um, in my edit our profile, um, let me cut that part out. Um, So I have those set up of um, use this full name. Actually, that, that part doesn't matter for this, but use this dot description. And then it's a list of all the all the pieces of the description that you can preset whatever you want them to be. Yeah, there, there's a function, isn't there? I, I'd lost, I yeah. nearly went into that one today, actually, um, but didn't. Um, but you, yeah, you can set that up quite nicely with, a different function it might be it edits it looks like there's edit edit our profile um function that yeah. I, I guess would allow you to to define that in your i guess our profile yeah, you, for whatever scope you define i guess uh right at the user level yeah if you go to um use description defaults help it describes pieces of that mm -hmm. um yeah. Uh, I've, got, I've, yeah. got, I've got to jump off. Um, yep. You guys, by all means, feel free. <laughs> to but thanks for thanks, Cohen. Looking forward to building on this next week. So, thanks so much. All right. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, and bye. I think I, I will go ahead and just take next week because I've used a lot of the functions that he didn't quite get to, and so uh, I should be able to kind of explain how they work um but then after that we'll go on to things that aren't package related and someone else will have to take the week <laughs> all right so i'll John, see everyone John, is there any oh, preference on the ahead. direction to take after next week or is it just whoever <laughs> decides to present decides on direction exactly that um in the spreadsheet we have a system or i have a system in there to kind of keep track of what we have covered and so you can see what we haven't covered and go from there um but yeah it's i mean you know if nothing else just start from the top of the use this uh documentation um preferably on the website version because it's grouped into sections but you know choose a section that sounds interesting or that you either have used a lot or that you want to learn how to use better um and go from there Sound good? Awesome. Sounds good. All right. I will see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.